Good morning, ladies. I'm coming to you today from my garden with a beautiful bloom that just came in. This is the Rose of Sharon, also commonly known as the hibiscus. Look how big it is. Let me put my hand next to it for you. Now, flowers can mean many things to many people. And at the end, I'm going to share what this flower has come to represent to me based on its biblical use. But it is the state flower of Hawaii and has come to represent royalty, power, and respect. To the Chinese, it's a symbol of success. And some faiths, such as the Hindu faith, align it with a specific god or goddess. In the Christian faith, let's open up the Bible to see what we can learn. This amazing flower is mentioned in the Bible. And although we can't know for sure that this is the flower they were talking about, we can be sure that this flower was named Rose of Sharon after biblical times. Commonly associated with more tropical climates, but here in Indiana, it actually grows as a perennial. Isn't that amazing? And I have my Bible open because I want to talk to you about the significance of this flower biblically and really what it's come to mean to me personally. I'd love to know if you have a personal connection to the Rose of Sharon, and if so, what that flower has come to represent for you, because every interpretation I think is worthy of hearing. I'm so interested to know what you may say. I have my Bible open to Song of Solomon, where we hear the beloved, also known as the Shulamite woman, speaking to her lover. This whole book, Song of Solomon, is a conversation between two lovers, and I have avoided this book because, oh, it's just a little, <laughs> it's just a little over the top, I will say. But of course, if flowers are involved, I want to know more. So if you join me in chapter two, we see the Shulamite woman saying, I am a rose of Sharon a lily of the valleys. So she's making this declaration about herself and her own beauty. And basically, sister, she is owning it. Her confidence is coming from a place that's between her and God. If you can jump with me, I want to be bold and share 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 3 with you. Do not let your adorning be external, the braiding of hair and the putting on of gold jewelry or the clothing you wear. But let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. We do know that the woman is talking about her physical body. Notice she is not talking about her bag or her beautiful earrings in this. She's talking about her personal identity as a created being of God. I wonder if you have ever been able to say out loud to your spouse something very positive about your appearance. And are you nervous to do that? What do you think his response might be to you praising your own appearance or who you are? Let's see what the Bible says the lover's responses. He says, as a lily among brambles, so is my love among the young women. Isn't that cool? And not only is he agreeing, he's adding a little something. He says, you are like a way above anyone I've ever met in terms of beauty. Isn't that amazing? No wonder they were enjoying themselves. <laughs> In this book, I mean, I know our husbands are not always the best at giving us positive feedback. It's good to have a spouse who's willing to tell you in love about your shortcomings so that you can grow, someone who has your growth in mind. But I'm praying, sister, that you have a man or God is building in him into the kind of man who is able to hear you say a positive thing about yourself and not tear you down, but build upon it 
and encourage you to blossom. Because certainly, sister, when I'm in my garden and I see a stunner and I know she's mine, I say, you are like a lily among brambles. Look at all this. <laughs> okay, so say it with me, ladies. On the count of three, one, two, three. I am a Rose of Sharon, a Lily of the Valleys. You did it. The meaning of the Rose of Sharon, the hibiscus today for you, is own it. Well, sister, before we part ways, I wanted to let you know if you enjoyed this and you'd like more things like this, I have an online flower club that meets to arrange flowers together and learn the secret meanings behind the blooms as they relate to the Word of God. It's called Faith Flowers and Friends. We also have in-person ladies events, which I love doing. So if we're coming near you, you'll see it on our updated calendar. And in the meantime, please consider joining our online flower club. It's only $10 a month. We meet together to make an amazing arrangement with one focal flower that I'll ask you to bring. And it's going to be so fun. I'd love to have you there. This is Laura Gabriel with Faith Flowers and Friends. I'll see you soon.